What is up, everybody? Will Lewis, Dub Lewis from Fantasy Sports Insight. We are back for another night of WNBA DFS. Um, you know, I hope you guys have your seatbelts fastened because uh, there are not many left off days for the remainder of the season. You know, we are going to be going hard and heavy for um, really, you know, really one or two days off every couple of weeks. And so it's going to be really exciting and just a lot of action. So I'm super excited about that. You know, another really uh, a good start to the week last night. You know, we had a lot of Diana Taurasi. You know, Ali Quigley, Bell Lari, Caitlin Thorne were our value plays on DK that we mixed in with, um, you know, stats like Brandon Stewart. And, you know, on FanDuel had a lot of Azaree Stevens as well as Diana Taurasi. And really, you know, the only dad that, you know, I touted a lot of Courtney Williams yesterday and she wasn't hitting her shots. And, you know, her minutes are still just not, not great. And so I'm kind of confused about that. But, you know, I think that was a little bit tilting, but I still think the play was that was right there. And, you know, overall, I think a lot of our plays have been sharp and, you know, one of these days here, we're gonna have a big hit. And so I'm uh, hoping, you know, that that's tonight with another really nice slate that we have tonight. You know, to, to start off the night, we have, um, you know, Minnesota, New York, and really the only injury news that we don't really have at the moment is the status of Lexi Brown, who um, I, she is projected to be in the starting lineup. I think she is through the concussion protocol and the symptoms apparently are subsiding. So I expect her to be in the lineup again tonight. You know, that's interesting because, you know, the links are down. Shanice Johnson, who is, you know, Al Kareem and Christmas Helly, also was out, you know, a couple weeks ago, she gets injured. Shanice Johnson goes down um, last game. And so, you know, Minnesota's pretty shorthanded at guard. So if Lexi Brown were to miss, that would obviously open up a lot of minutes in that backcourt, but I do expect her back. But, you know, nonetheless, I really do like Crystal Dangerfield. It's a really nice play on both sides. Um, you know, she will be one of the most popular plays on the slate today. You know, really cheap tag on FanDuel, as well as DraftKings. You know, she... She showed her range from deep last game, you know, kind of flashed a little bit of upside. And so, you know, I, she's a really small player. Um, so, you know, not, not necessarily making a huge impact, um, but, you know, she, she really is a, kind of like a Courtney Williams, goes after a lot of loose balls, rebounds, will, will pile it up, um, you know, and kind of like, you know, the steals, assists, rebounds. And, you know, she also showed her range from deep last game. So I think there is plenty of upside with the Crystal Dangerfield play. And the minutes are just incredible. You know, that's the most, you know, the – thing I like most about her is the minutes, you know, Cheryl Reeve, you know, wants to give their, you know, their, their draft pick a lot of run here uh, with some of the injuries. And so I think you can expect, you know, 30 plus minutes from her tonight. And so she makes a really good value. You know, Lexi Brown, you know, I think it's a really solid GPP play tonight, assuming that she plays. I think, you know, I think obviously the coming off of concussions a little carry does some, does carry some risk, you know, who knows what the minutes might look like, but you know, with Shanice Johnson now gone uh, on the sidelines with, uh, you know, KZK, I really do think that there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's opportunity in that backcourt. And so Lexi Brown, you know, who's not shot the ball very well this year, is in a really good spot against, you know, the New York Liberty backcourt who have just bled points to, you know, opposing backcourts all year. And so I think Lexi Brown would be a great GPP play, but, you know, I would be reserved on her in cash because who knows what the minutes uh, might look like, you know, with the first game back off injury. Um, you know, I really do like Rachel Bantam. I, I, she is, she's always been a pretty good uh, fantasy point per minute player. She had a really rough first half last game, but still kind of scraped her way to 16, 17 fantasy points. And they'll probably see around that 20 minute mark, I would think again. And, you know, she's someone that could easily, you know, put up 18, 20 fantasy points at a pretty cheap tag. I like her more on FanDuel if you need like a second value play. Um, but I think she's interesting there. Uh, Bridget Carlton, uh, kind of your men price punt. Um, more play if Lexi Brown were to be out. Uh, I'm not really on her if Lexi Brown is in. She might be out of the rotation. Um, you know, going to, uh, to the, you know, the Lynx front court now, I, I really do think it all starts with Sylvia Fowles still. You know, Nafisa Collier's had some great games. We'll touch on her in a second. But, you know, I'm always more inclined to play Fowles. Um, the issue with Fowles is she's been getting in foul trouble a little bit lately, uh, which has been um, a little bit of a concern. But, you know, even with foul trouble last game, still hit 45, you know, fantasy points again in 26 minutes against Connecticut. Um, you know, this is a really good spot for her here. Uh, Kia Stokes and, you know, Manis Ivy should keep her around the rim. I would think a good amount. And so I really do like South fouls in this matchup. New York, New York has given up a lot of offensive rebounds, a lot of uh, second chance putback points. Um, you know, you saw, um, you know, Stewart uh, have a lot of putback points in that first game against New York. And so, you know, I really do think fouls is in a really good spot here to click offensive rebounds. And uh, hopefully even in 30, 32 minutes, you know, she's able to pay off that price tag as one of the top sets on the slate. Nafisa Collier, I'm always going to prefer fouls than Nafisa Collier. I just think Collier has more of a floor than fouls does, but, you know, we've seen, you know, when, when Collier can rack up the blocks and steals that she can put up, you know, really monster fantasy point totals. Just the issue is, you know, she needs the blocks and steals, in my opinion, to really get all the way up to value. You know, 41 fantasy points last game, but needed five blocks and steals to get there. And so, you know, if she's not getting four or five, then, you know, you're, you're more in the 30, 35 point fantasy point range. However, you know, New York has given up a ton of, you know, peripheral steals and blocks to, you know, opposing teams this year. And so it really is a good spot for her to be able to rack up some of those blocks and steals. So, you know, again, I, I think she's better reserved for tournaments because I think there are more optimal safe plays on the slate. 
but you know, again, if his color has great, you know, slate breaking upside, you know, if the blocks and steals come, you know, with the points, rebounds and assists, and I do think current fouls are actually pairable together and lineups and a spot against New York, just because I do think that it's such a great spot for them. You know, to round out Minnesota, Demir's Dantas has been a very just consistent 20, 25 fantasy points at night in and out. She's a fine cash play if you land on her, but you know, not something I'm really building around just because I don't think she has much upside playing next to Collier and fouls. And really outside of that, I don't have much interest in, you know, the rest of, uh, uh, in Minnesota. On the New York side of the ball, um, again, you know, Sabrina remains out for the time being. Um, you know, we saw Kia Nurse return to the lineup and, you know, we had a lot of, especially on FanDuel and really on DraftKings too, a lot of Willoughby and Jasmine Jones chalk class game, um, both Nurse and I was a little bit hesitant on that. And um, I think that remains the case tonight. My thing with New York is going to be, you know, they were like this last year under Katie Smith. They're going to be like this. They're going to be like this um, under Walt Hopkins this year as a, as a really bad team. Um, trying to figure out what they have as far as, you know, their young players and stuff. They are going to, their, their, their minutes night in and out are going to be very unpredictable. And so it's going to be really hard to really just stack up the Liberty, I think, in these spots, just because, it, you know, the player that you think might get 25, 30 minutes might play five or 10. And, you know, the, you know, the bench players might see 25, 30. It's just the way it's going to be. He's going to play the hot hand. He's going to play his working. And so it's, it's really tough to really tout a ton of Liberty players. But that being said, I do think there are some plays that I, I am kind of decently keen on tonight. Um, but still, you know, you have to know the risk uh, that comes with these Liberty players. And, uh, you know, we'll start in the backcourt. Uh, it, first of all, this is a really good, this is a good matchup for the Liberty. This is a game that uh, the, the, the links are a tough defense for sure, but I think the Liberty can't hang around in this one. I think they have the talent to do that. So I would hope this game stays relatively close and starting the backcourt. I think Lacia Clarendon again, really struggle in the first half um, last game against Phoenix, but, you know, still kind of came alive in the second half and managed a, fan, a decent fantasy out and only played 24 minutes. But, you know, I think if they keep this game close and the first unit is playing well, then, you know, you could see her up, you know, the 30, 32, you know, minute mark. And, you know, she could easily pay off five, six X on FanDuel and hit that four X mark on DraftKings, you know, around 30 fantasy points. So I do wish Claren and just the ball in her hands constantly when she's out there, you know, without Sabrina, they're going to rely on her to make plays. And if that first unit's playing well, she should get some extra run. So I do like Lacia Claren as a solid play. Kia Nurse more of a DraftKings play than FanDuel today at the, you know, the cheaper tax still. She uh, had a rough first half last game, but again, kind of came alive in the second half. But again, you know, she had 17 points, one assist, one steal. It, it's, it's all going to be scoring her line for Kia Nurse. She doesn't do much else besides that. And so you have to have her shooter weight value, which, you know, makes her very uh, GPP oriented. And again, if, if the minutes aren't there, then she's not going to be able to, you know, really score the ball that gets value. And so, it, you know, it's a tough sell. But I do like Kia Nurse. It's a pretty solid uh, play over there on DraftKings. More GPP oriented on FanDuel with uh, better plays, in my opinion, there. Um, Jasmine Jones, uh, I think is okay. She played 21 minutes last game. It didn't really look for a shot. But, you know, you kind of saw her seven rebounds, four assists. She contributed in a lot of different ways. So, I think she has a pretty nice floor when she gets the minutes. Uh, you know, the issue is just going to be what kind of minutes that she get. And now if she's in that 20, 25 fit, uh, minute range, you know, you could see her, you know, push 4X, uh, 5X on, you know, both sides. But I, I, it's, it's tough to know what that looks like. And so she's probably better reserved for tournaments um, for, uh, for me, especially with Dangerfield being a really solid, uh, you know, value option at guard. Um, as far as the rest of the guards go, I, or, you know, I, and, you know, wings, guards, I don't really have much interest in, and, you know, Willoughby, Odom, I think that's just going to be a real, especially with Nurse back, it's just going to be really tough to predict, you know, where those minutes are going to go um, over to, you know, to the to the, the Liberty uh, wing players. And so, you know, rounding out with the front court players, again, I, the front court players, Walt Hawkins is going to, you know, it's crazy. Zowie or Stokes could be having a good game and Shook could come in and have a better game. And suddenly, you know, it's Kylie Shook getting all the minutes and, you know, they have Megan Walker now. And so there's a lot of bodies that he could definitely play in that front court. However, you know, again, in a matchup against Fowles, you, you have to think, you know, they're going to need Stokes or Zowie out there. Just This is a matchup. You saw Griner really exploit the Liberty front court. And so you would think that these, you know, these experienced veterans like Fouts should have their way with the younger front court. And so I would think that Stokes or Zowie, you know, has a decent game here because they get the minutes. Um, I'm going to prefer Zowie just because Stokes has been not look, been looking for a shot at all this year. Uh, she, she's been playing decent minutes. I mean, she's been playing 25 to 30 minutes a game. The issue is she's doing really nothing except rebound. The blocks and steals haven't come uh, much with the rebounding. And then she's just not really not looking for a shot. You know, she thinks she's a three-point shooter now. So she's out the line a little bit more than I like, the three-point line more than I like. And so it's uh, a little bit of a concern there. So I'd probably prefer Zowie B who's looking for a shot a little bit more. But, you know, she hasn't played more than 25 minutes in a game yet this year. So uh, there is some risk uh, there, more GPP oriented. But, uh, you know, I think I'd, she is a fine play if you get on her. And that kind of rounds out New York uh, for me. And then moving into the second game, Las Vegas and Washington. Um, I think what you're seeing here, we'll start with Washington. 
Washington's starting to become a little bit, you know, priced out to me. They are a team that, you know, with Atkins and Mitchell, Powers, Misaman, you know, Hines Allen, they have a lot of uh, very capable uh, contributors in fantasy. And so it's, it's becoming pretty tough uh, night in and out to kind of figure out, um, you know, where exactly the production is going to come from just because they're so balanced. And so, you know, the upside that we're seeing at some of these prices is honestly not too great. Um, you know, on FanDuel, um, you know, at, I think, and really, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings, I think Atkins and, you know, Mitchell are both fine plays. I definitely prefer Atkins to Mitchell. I think she's a fine play, but especially on FanDuel at 6.0, like she, there's not a ton more upside that she could provide uh, at 6.0 just because, you know, she's more of a score and she needs to score in steals. And so, you know, in order to hit five, six, X, she's going to have to probably score 20 and, you know, collect a couple of steals to get you to value. And so I think she's a, she's a fine play, definitely a solid play. It's just like some of these players are getting a little bit priced out for me. And so I'm not necessarily prioritizing, you know, uh, them exactly. Mitchell, I, I think uh, it's a pretty fine matchup. She you knows she should get a good spot with Lindsay Allen on her. Um, and, you know, with the, the, Liber- the Aces front court being so good and uh, probably being able to, you know, maintain the, the interior for the Mystics a decent amount. I think Mitchell will get some open looks from three. And so I think she's a fine play, but still more tournament oriented for me. And, you know, moving out to, you know, the forwards, you know, Ariel Powers, Heinz Allen, Miesema, you know, these three have been incredible this year. And, you know, we thought Miesema was going to be, you know, a fantasy stud this year, a 40 to 50 fantasy or, you know, fantasy point player night in and out. We've really kind of seen Powers and Heinz Allen um, really actually kind of become the better um, plays. You know, also, obviously Miesema has been really consistent, but we haven't really seen the upside from her this year. And I think at their prices, you know, tonight, this is a tough matchup. Uh, we'll start with Heinz Allen, you know. She's been great this year, and I, I think she's a really good player, but this is a really, really tough spot for her. You know, I think Swords and, you know, Wilson are both very good defenders, and I think uh, I would imagine Asia gets uh, Heinz Allen. And so I think it's a, it's a harder matchup. We've seen a lot of forwards that have done well struggle against the Aces just because Swords and, uh, and Hamby and Wilson are pretty tough interior. Um, so I think, I think this is not a spot I'll be chasing Heinz Allen. I, I prefer me some in a powers in the spot. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of where I'll be taking my stance tonight as I prefer me some men and powers. I, I really do like Ariel powers. Um, you know, she is, we talked about her in the preseason, you know, she really looks for a shot. She scored 20 and 20 plus in two games this year. You know, she, she has the steal upside as well. And so that's usually when you get the upside, you know, the five, six X comes uh, with the steals with Ariel power. So this, should, this game should play pretty quick and fast. And so I do like, a you know, the spot for Ariel powers to go get hers tonight. And then, you know, I think Emma Mieseman is a player that, you know, uh, you know, the Aces front court might have a little more trouble with. I think they should be able to maintain Hunt Allen pretty well. But Mieseman's, you know, too talented a player, um, in my opinion, to, uh, you know, to have a let down spot here. I think, you know, she is the, the more consistent and reliable player, I think, in the, in the front court compared to Hunt Allen. So I would take her over Hines um, here tonight. And so really Mieseman and Powers are still going to be my preferred place for the Mystics over Hines Allen. It, you know, it's just I think it's a matter of pricing. And, you know, some of these players are uh, – Again, with so many, you know, uh, able bodies on this Mystics team, they're oftentimes – it's hard to sometimes predict, you know, where that – where that the, the play is going to come from, where you're really going to get the most value from. And so I, I don't necessarily think that any of these plays are necessarily must uh, because I think there's other really nice spots on the slate. And, you know, starting with – and going to the Las Vegas side of the ball, uh, I mean, I really don't have any interest in the Jack Young, Daniel Robinson, Lindsey Allen um, guard rotation. And then Caleb McBride, who saw, finally saw 30 minutes, I think – She's a really good bounce back candidate here. Um, really cheap at a guard on FanDuel. I think a good DraftKings play as well. Uh, you know, she has the upside. It, with the, the upside this year was a little bit less probably than it would be last year, just with, you know, McCotry getting a lot of shots from the wing position this year. But I did think, uh, you know, it's a good spot for Kayla McBride. And, uh, you know, with it being a pretty, I think it'll be a front court battle. And so this, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of kickouts and um, a lot of good looks for the wings and uh, some of the guards here. I like Kayla McBride the best of that bunch for sure. Uh, just with the minutes and, you know, opportunity, uh, stability, I think. And then really my only other plays I'll be looking at, you know, are the front court plays for the aces, you know, Wilson, McCautry, Hamby, and Swords. Um, Swords still really cheap, uh, 3.2 on Fandle. I think she's a fine play, but it's a tough matchup for her. There's, there's been better ones this year, and so I don't think you really need her on today's slate, but, you know, a fine punt value if you want to go there. Um, you know, Derek and Hamby still pretty underpriced, both sides, in my opinion. Uh, this is a player who – the, the issue so far, and I will say this, the issue with the, the Aces right now is their minutes. You know, Angel McCautry is uh, – the minutes that Coach Lambert is giving her are not great. Has not played more than 26 minutes in a game this year. Has played 15 minutes twice. You know, so she carries a lot of risk just because she's a great player, but the minutes, they're, they're really limiting her off her injury. So she carries a lot of risk, way more sure for tournaments, I think, just because I can't really possibly trust her um, if, she, if, if, she has, if she's not going to be able to play the minutes. Um, and so I, I prefer Handy and Wilson. And Handy – 
Hamby's due for, I think, one of these games will go for 40. I don't know when that's going to be, but it should be pretty soon here, I would think. You know, the issue with her, too, is she hasn't played more than 28 minutes. And so you, you would like to see her more towards that 30-minute mark. But I still think Hamby's really cheap on both sides and makes her a really strong play. Uh, just as another, you know, in a really uh, in a competitive game, they're going to give Hamby probably more minutes, I would think, than they have uh, in some of these games that have blown out earlier. And so I, I do like Hamby. You know, the issue with Pat, she's not been hitting her threes this year. Um, but I think she starts shooting at a higher clip, you know, obviously the steals and the rebounding assist and really the two point scoring has kind of come. It's, it's just, we hopefully we get a couple more th uh, three point uh, buckets out of her. And so hopefully she can kind of scrape her way to value, but like her on both sides for sure. Aja Wilson, again, she's probably the top play on the slate and, you know, she is kind of that way. And on most slates she's on. Again, we really haven't seen her flash the crazy upside. And again, she hasn't played more than 31 minutes in a game this year. You know, we've seen her more in the 35 to 40 minute, um, range and the issue has been we kind of really haven't seen the block and steals come um, as much this year you know she's had uh, one block and steal in three separate games and had three steals in one game but you know I kind of like to see some of those peripherals uh, some more peripherals for her uh, to really become like one of those elite plays that we you know that's a lock button on every slate and so I think while she is the top play on the slate I think there is merit to fade in her uh, just because I, I think a lot of times some of the lineups that we're building are, are becoming so concentrated on these studs that aren't necessarily getting a ton of minutes and so you know you're kind of capping your upside where you maybe you could be targeting some of the players that are seeing similar minutes at cheaper prices like Hamby or players like that and so I think there's merit to fading Wilson but again I do believe she has a top set on the slate and and you know someone that I probably will have in a lot of my lineups just I just did just want to mention that because it's a tough matchup for both these front courts and so you know there could be um uh, she could, you know, you may not flash that 45, 50 fan point, fantasy point upside that we're looking for. And again, with it being a pretty tough matchup for, her, you know, I think McCautry and Hamby and Gitzboth as well. It just, you know, especially with McCautry, just the minutes for uh, her are just pretty concerning. So I'll leave it at that. And then moving into the last game of the night, I, I think this is a really nice game to target, honestly. Again, we'll start with LA. This is a really good spot against Indiana. Indiana is playing really fast this year and um, pushing the tempo. The issue with LA this year has just been minutes. Uh, you know, Chelsea Gray, a really nice tag, I think. Um, she's playing 30 minutes a night, so I think she's in a good bounce back spot here. And I, I, I do trust her minutes. So I do like the spot for Chelsea Gray quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm not really chasing, uh, you know, Brittany Sykes, Augustus, Tay Cooper, Weiss, like all those other guards that, you know, Derek Fisher's playing. So, uh, you know, uh, Chelsea Gray is really my, you know, my main uh, probably impact player from that uh, sparse backcourt. And then moving on to the forwards, I think, uh, it's a good spot for Candace and NECA. The issue has just been minutes. Candace is getting 30 minutes, and that pretty much seems to be her cap. So, you know, assuming we get 30 minutes, Candace Parker, I like it for probably 35, 40 fantasy points. Um, power forwards have been smashing Indiana this year. Uh, you know, Satusa Bali uh, went off, um, and a couple of others have all had really nice games against, uh, you know, Dupree in the Indiana power forward position. And so it's a really good spot for Candace Parker, I think. I would like to see a couple more minutes out of her, but I do think she has plenty of upside even in 30 minutes. So I like Candace Parker. It's a strong play tonight. NECA saw 33 minutes last game after she hadn't seen more than 25. And so, you know, is maybe there's a – Fisher's going to play her a little bit more than he has in the past. I do not know. That's going to be up for you probably to decide what your level of comfort is on that. You know, the issue is we haven't really seen a NECA ceiling game this year. That's, you know, obviously been with Candace Parker being back in the line, you know, being a much better version of herself than last year. You know, NECA is more of a 30-35 fantasy point player. And so – I do like the tag, especially on Vandal. You know, she comes at a discount compared to some of the other studs, but still more reserved for tournament just because I do think there are safer plays that are, you know, more guaranteed to get, you know, a couple more minutes than NECA. And it's especially with McCowan, uh, you know, that center spot, uh, you know, NECA's a little undersized. And so it'll be interesting to see how she deals with McCowan. So I probably prefer Parker to NECA uh, tonight. And then, you know, with especially with Goolidge back too, that could be another body that mixes in there in the LA front court. So it just, uh, um, you know, NECA does carry a little bit of risk, I think. But I still think she's really a good, solid tournament play. Uh, I just prefer Parker, personally. And then starting at the Indiana side of the ball, you know, actually some, some pretty good in injury news for Indiana. You know, Victoria Vivian's out. Uh, so no Wheeler, no Vivian's, and also now Lee Chanwa out. So, you know, there is some value, I think, to be had with, you know, the Indiana side of the ball. And uh, we'll start with the guards. You know, Julie Alamon finally kind of come alive. You know, she had really good numbers overseas, a um, member of the Belgian national team. Um, a really good player and she tried to cook a couple games to get uh, warmed up in the W, but you know, now she's, her minutes have been great, you know, 31, 29, 33 and 34. She's playing great minutes in the last two games. You know, she's finally had 33, 34 fantasy points. You know, the steals have come with the assists and she's had really nice outings. Um, it's a tough matchup against Chelsea Gray. I will say that. So I don't try to expect the 30, 35 fantasy point uh, marker, but I really do like the prize, both Fandle and DraftKings. And she's probably a pretty good bet to hit 20, 25, maybe hit, even hit that 30 mark. So I do like Julia Alamon 
quite a bit. I think Vivian's being out kind of opens up even more minutes for all these players. So Alamont's a solid play. Um, with with uh, Victoria Vivian's out, really like Tiffany Mitchell and Kelsey Mitchell, both quite a bit. I think they both get some more minutes here. Um, you know, Tiffany Mitchell has been uh, kind of replaced by Vivian's um, as far as substitutions patterns go. And so I would hope that Tiffany Mitchell will get probably five to more minutes than she has here um, so far this season. So I do like Tiffany Mitchell's a really solid play, um, as well as Kelsey Mitchell. I think both of them probably, you know, play around 30 minutes and, you know, should have really solid outings here um, just because, you know, the uh, I would think that the L.A. front courts, uh, I, I don't know exactly know what the, what the games Dupree, I don't know what the upside is for, you know, Dupree and some of these players that have had really nice games, um, especially Burke as well, played really well off the bench. I don't really expect that again. So I do prefer, uh, you know, Tiffany and Kelsey uh, to have really nice games here for Indiana. So I think both the, one of them or even both, are, you know, are, are, are solid pieces in the lineup. And I do like Alamon as well. So really all three of those are pretty solid plays here, I think, against L.A. And then moving to the front court again, you know, Natalie Achamo out, uh, opens up for things for Tierra McCowan. You know, we're remembering her from this 50, 60 fantasy point player last year when she started. And, you know, we're not going to see that again this year just because the way Indiana's playing, they're playing so fast. And um, it's a lot of times Tiffany and Kelsey running on the court, chucking up shots. And um, so they're not really featuring McCowan in the post up necessarily. And they're also giving a lot more work to Dupree this year. Uh, which just seems to be, you know, product of the new coach liking to pre a lot and kind of wanting to build around her skill set, which is fine. But still, McCowan, both sides are really cheap, especially on FanDuel. I think the tag is, re is really cheap still. And so the upside is just kind of insatiable at that price. And so kind of seems like a tough fade there. But I think there is merit to fading her. I just think that, you know, we again, we're probably on that similar upside that we've seen in the past, but I still think she does have, you know, that 40, 45 fantasy point upside. And so, I, again, I really do like Terry McCowan again tonight. You know, like McCowan, Mabunga is an interesting dart value that could get some run instead of um, McCowan. And then, of course, Candace Dupree. You know, never a player that I've really been – I've never really gotten excited about playing Candace Dupree, but, you know, they are – she's getting a lot of work this year. Um, she's so efficient, you know, two-point shooter. She, I mean, when she – her turnarounds, her, her uh, fadeaway jumpers, you know, she's hitting at an extremely high clip this year. It's just a pretty tough matchup against Candace. Um, and, again, not – I probably prefer McCowan at the cheaper tag, I think, compared to Dupree. <sighs> And um, for the most part, that really rounds out, you know, the Indiana side of the ball and that last game. And so I think, you know, overall, it's three solid games. I do like the slate quite a bit tonight. I uh, like the contest out there as well. So it should be a good night of WNBA DFS. And, um, you know, if you like what you saw here at the video, I hope that you would uh, subscribe to the chat, uh, see our core plays, get our, you know, our premium chat us discussing, you know, breaking news, uh, lineups, uh, best plays. And, um, and I hope to see you guys uh, as a member of the FSI team. So uh, let's get after it tonight and good luck to everyone. See you.